Hello everybody, this is going to be a color correction tutorial. My name is Aria and I am with Independent Spirit Films. Today we're going to be doing some color correction on footage that was shot with the Magic Lantern RAW hack on a 60D camera. And I just wanted to show everyone how to do basic color correction in DaVinci Resolve Lite. I'm using DaVinci Resolve Lite version 10 and most of this footage actually looks pretty good straight out of the camera but maybe that doesn't always happen so let's say you're working on a film and you get footage back that looks something like this uh, it could have been shot with a really flat profile the color balance might have been way off nobody did their white balancing so what do you do if you have something that looks like this well the first thing you want to do when you're color correcting is you want to open up your scopes. So I'm going to right click show scopes. Your scope is how you're going to do all your color work. Um, a lot of people have told me that they find color correction and color grading confusing because they're just trying to guess with their eye and they're not sure if they're doing it right. If you learn to use scopes you're not going to have that problem because you're getting actual um, data on what you have in the image and you're going to see uh, I'm going to explain all this what you're seeing here so and also there's a difference between color correction and color grading first you want to go through after you have uh, after you have your locked edit you want to go through and do all your color correction balance everything have your highlights be pure white have your shadows darkest shadows be pure black you go through you color correct then you can apply a grade across the board. So to go over this waveform scope, uh, what you're seeing here is down here is the shadowy areas. And as you can see, they're pretty, pretty high up because right at zero would be the darkest blacks. And up here are your highlights. And as you can see, they're not up to the top. They're not at the ceiling here at 1023. So what we want to do to balance this image is first uh, we're going to go with the shadows and bring them all the way down. So we're going to try to hit the floor with these shadows. We're going to use this scrolling bar here and we're going to drag it down until we see the darkest parts of the image, which is down here, actually hitting the bottom of this waveform. And you want to be careful. You don't want to go too far because when you go too far you start crushing the blacks. Um, you might want that look when you're grading. Some people really like that look. But when you're color correcting you want to preserve all the information that you can. So down here when you see these little these little spikes, this is information in the image. You don't want to lose that data. So if you go too far like this, you're losing those little points. So bring it just to where where it's touching, where you still have some information in the image. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we want to neutralize uh, these blacks here. We want the blackest part of the image to actually look black and not brown or purple or you know whatever color cast there is. So if you uh, if you use Control F, Control F will go full screen and you have to sort of analyze your image and see where your darkest black would be. So it's kind of hard to tell because this is so distorted with the color, but I'm thinking maybe in this area you'd have uh, the closest thing to a pure black. So if we go here into the color wheel and we start moving things around, what you're looking for is for these bands of blue, green, and red to, to touch and line up. So see right here where you've got kind of the white looking? White in your waveform means it's neutral. It means it's a blend of all three channels. So when you're seeing the white, that means you've got a gray or a pure white or a pure black. And we want to come as close to that as we can in the part of the image where we know it needs to be close to pure black. So then I'm going to just pull it back down about there 
and that means that my darkest shadows are pretty pretty well balanced right now. But it still looks terrible. Again, control F, we can see that it's way too brown and red and doesn't seem right for this image. So the next thing is we have to go into our highlights. So you start with the shadows, then you do your highlights. And we're going to try to hit the roof up here on the waveform. And that will help a lot with appropriate contrast. So I'm going to go up, 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 up. And the same rule applies about neutralizing your three bands of color. So here I can see my red down here, uh, and then the green, and then the blue. It's really hard to see, but it's up here. And I know that in my image, if you do Control F, you'll get a bigger picture without going full screen. So Control F, Control F. Um, I can see that in my image, right about here, I should have pure white, but since I have the red here and the green here and the blue up there, it's off. So I'm going to bring them closer together by using my color wheel. And you can just play around with that color wheel until you get used to it. If you haven't used it before, um, you'll get the hang of it just by fiddling around with it. So we get, we're getting pretty close there, but it's just in our highlights. And if we bring it back up, you'll see them kind of spread out a little bit more. I'm going to fine tune this. Want that red and green to touch. And then we want it not to clip. So as I bring it down from that ceiling, I want to kind of balance them touching but not hitting uh, the top, over the, over the top. Because if you go past the top, then you're going to have clipping in your highlights, and nothing looks worse than a bunch of blown out highlights that just screams cheap video. So we want our images to look filmic and cinematic. We need our highlights to have uh, all the information preserved and a nice roll off. So lastly, we can see, okay, now we've got black in the image, we've got white in the image, it still looks really brown. So that's going to be in our midtones. That's going to be the gamma uh, color wheel here. So we want to, as the third step in color correction, we want to get rid of the cast in the midtone. So if you play around with it, you can kind of see where you get closer and closer to where it should be. And um, right about there is what the image should look like. And the beautiful thing about uh, working with raw images is that you can do this. You can manipulate the color all across the board and not have horrible artifacts and uh, all your information is preserved. You can recover so much from the highlights and the shadows because you have all the data there. If you're using something like um, regular DSLR footage, which is H.264, it compresses everything and you really can't uh, do proper color correction. So the cool thing about the Magic Lantern hack, which is where this footage came from, is that you're able to, uh, you know, really, really do what you need to do to get the image to look like how you want and recover all those highlights and, and shadow detail and then apply your color grade. Another little tip here is that in DaVinci Resolve, these buttons here are sort of the oops, I screwed up button. You can just go in here and hit these buttons um, and they're individually marked to whether they're the lift gamma or gain. And the lift is the shadows and the gamma is the midtones and the gain is the highlights. So that's an easy way to reset um, corrections you've made that you're not happy with. And I find that pretty handy, especially um, if you're learning. So that was pretty good. Now I want to show you guys what you can do if you're recording in RAW and why it's so incredibly helpful in post-production. So here we have this shot um, off camera that this is what it looks like of the, of the rapids, the water going down the rocks. And, you know, those highlights look pretty bad. Um, they're really blown out. And as I said before, nothing screams terrible quality video camera than highlights blown out all to hell. 
So this is a huge pet peeve of mine and I want to get rid of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the scopes. Our friend, the waveform scope. And I can shrink it down here a little bit smaller to see our image. And I'm going to just pull down the gain here and watch the top of the scope here where it's showing that uh, information is peaking, it's blowing out. So as I drag it down, look at how far I can pull this and still have more information captured there on the sensor. So I want to have just the tips of these little points up to the ceiling here so that I'm retaining all the highlight uh, data that I can. And now, if you look at this image, you know, this looks, this looks pretty good. This looks like the way you want it to look, as opposed to before, it was something, it was something, you know, well, not quite that bad. But it was, it was about in this neighborhood. And then as you pull down those highlights, you can really recover so much information. And what this is doing is this is creating the dynamic range, uh, the dynamic range between the darkest darks in your shadows and the brightest whites. You want that to be as wide as possible. So this is looking pretty good. And remember, this is just color correction. I'm not doing, I'm not doing color grading. So in color correction, I'm just trying to get the image as balanced as I can. I'm trying to pull all the information back into what you see, which is what you have here from 0 to 1023. This is what's visible. And you don't want any information beyond these boundaries because then it's clipping and you're losing what you captured off the camera. But the first thing is to have the image be balanced, and that's why I wanted to do this for you guys, to show you that it's actually pretty simple. You just want to go through those three steps of getting your shadows to the bottom, getting your highlights to the top, and making sure they're pretty close to neutral so that you don't have a color cast. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys today. For basic color correction, I hope this has been helpful and you guys are able to do some great things with your images. Um, I really encourage people, if you can, to go out and try shooting in RAW because whether you do it through a hack on your DSLR or whether you do it through something like a RED camera or even an Alexa, you'll be amazed at the difference it makes and how much you're able to work with that image in post. All right, have a good one.